What if you want to change between the Retro and the Universal Fight Board, or whatever you have uh, your Retro Dual modded to? In this part of Zero to Fight Sick, we're going to talk about what you need to do to have that switch wired we uh, installed earlier. Now this is building off some of the other things in this series, but I'm going to go through kind of the steps we're going to take to make that connection. What are you going to need? Well, I highly suggest one of these guys, magnifying glass, don't really need the arms of this solder helper guy, but uh, it's really helpful. You're going to need also, the uh, Retro uses a 3-pin DuPont. I know that's not the official name, but if you search on Amazon for DuPont connectors, this is what connector kits you, this is what you're going to find. Uh, we're also going to need some of those pins that are in the kits. These are tiny, they're kind of like the ones from the JSTs, um, and just as annoying. That means we also need our buddy, the mini crimper. So you need one that has a 1.6 and a 1.9 setting, uh, as well as mini screwdriver with that sim tip, or if you've just got something that's pretty small, a hex head or something like that, just to push those pins in it on occasion. Uh, scissors can be helpful. And for the other end, we're going to need our regular crimper with at least the one millimeter setting. Uh, we'll need our hookup wire. This is 24AWG. Heat shrink. Our mini torch. Our good friend, the toenail clippers, of course. And wire strippers and cutter. So there's that. Right, let's go over the steps real fast. So first things first is we want to start by wiring in the DuPont connector end. That way it's all even on this side. Uh, if you try and do the reverse, it can be kind of messy. Um, I'm going to be using red, green, and black wiring. So the diagram for the retro says NC is pin one, pin two is USB, and pin three is ground. Um, this will let the switch control whether or not you're using the retro or the UFB functionality instead of having to hold a button. I just don't like having to hold buttons, so there's that. Um, after we get the wires inserted into here, we can attach quick disconnects, which you'll need some of. Uh, again, these are in pretty good kits. And these are the big ones to fit those SCI switches that we installed. Uh, and we also have little covers for them so that they don't come into contact with anything. Not really likely to happen where they are, but hey, you know, it could always happen. Um, and here's our good friend cord wrap to make it pretty. Of course, this is a red and black case, so red and black cord wrap. All right, so I'll see you in a second. We're gonna get started um, with putting these pins in. I'm gonna start a couple, then come back and just show you. Okay, taking a few minutes, we have our first two wires connected. Now we're going to connect the final one. What the first step is, we're going to strip just a little bit off the end here. It does not take a lot at all because we want to land on this tiny little pin. Whoops. Again, you have the two sets of wings. The ones in the back here, which are a little bit taller and the shorter front uh, or middle ones. And you want to try and align the stripped part right over that middle set of fins while keeping some insulation on the back pair of fins. Looks like I got it about right there. Checking it under the magnifier really helps just to make sure because sometimes my close-up vision is not that good anymore. Then once we're lined up you just want to slide into that 1.6 here. Oops. It can be a little tricky sometimes holding it. Actually what works best is taking that out, slot the middle fins into pointing up into the little valley there, on the 1.6. Slot. Apply just enough pressure to keep it still. If you pry any more it's going to bite down and you won't, you wasted a pin. Then push the wire right up against the crimper. Squeeze once you're ready. And there we go. 
go. There's part one. Now this is a very tenuous connection right now, so don't think it's going to hold much. Don't go tugging at it to test it yet. It's not a good plan. The second thing here is we want to crimp down these little back fins, which will support us a little bit more. So I like to squeeze them a little bit with the tip, the little pliers end of these strippers. And give them a little squeeze. Just enough so that they're more U-shaped than V-shaped. What you want to do then, after that, is find the 1.9 part of your mini crimper here. Slot it into here. Guide it down and I find these seem to work a little bit better than the JST pins I had as far as getting those because sometimes the JST pins will just go to the side and it's not fun. Once you're lined up and you're sure, go ahead and give that a squeeze. Let's see. Yeah, that came out sort of okay. I've seen worse. We can kind of finagle, give it a little finesse with the plier end here. Squeeze it down, make sure we're set. Now, none of these pins are really meant to take a huge amount of force, so don't try and yank them out That's unless you expect to pull out the end. But otherwise, I'm giving it a little tug just to make sure. Yeah, it's staying on. It's good. All right, a couple things about these quote-unquote DuPont connectors. Uh, these specifically have a pin. Pin 1 is, well, there's a convenience marker of a little triangle on this side. Probably can't see it, but in yours, you'll probably see it. So I, I just use that as pin 1 all the time. Um, now, in the JST connectors, it has kind of that keyhole. This is more of a, just a circle. Um, and you would flip it around or whatever. The same side that you crimped, which is the top here, is the same side it goes in on. So you'll just slide that forward. Oh, it looks like some of the conductor got, didn't quite get in there. I think I'm gonna redo this guy, but all you wanna do is slide this forward until you get a little bit of a click. And if you have to, use that mini SIM tool, kind of poke and prod, because once you start getting in there, your fingers don't quite do the job. You can also kind of test a little bit if you've managed to get that pin in. If you put it, push it inside and you can feel it go in, then you're good. All right, I'm gonna redo this black pin. I'll see you in a minute. The next step will just be deciding how long we want this to be, and then uh, cutting it off and so forth. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back. Now, a note on these is that the pins don't go all the way up to the top here. They're going to notch inside here, and these little tabs will lock them down. If you need to pull one of these out, if you just pull right at the end of the cable, it's probably not going to work as well. You'll try, if you try getting a little something underneath these tabs, um, it can be your mini screwdriver, preferably a really tiny flathead, and then raise that up and then pull out, you'll have a much easier time. Uh, just be careful though, these tabs are very fragile. If you start, pull, if you start pulling them up, they're just going to snap and then you'll need another three hit. Uh, three pin here. Uh, otherwise, you're not too hard once you get the hang of crimping these little tiny pins. I feel like these are a little, actually a little bit easier more to get consistently than the uh, JST pins I have, uh, but it just might be the quality of the pins I have. So. All right, welcome back. Now, I've went ahead and put some sleeving on and with the heat shrink and I already color coded the ends here so we're good there. The only thing is how do we connect this to that SCI switch? Now this SCI's as I've mentioned in a few other videos use the really large quick disconnects and the problem is these are kind of small wires so we have to be careful about how we get them crimped on. As usual you want to go ahead and start by stripping off just a little bit at the end. Now with these, you need a little bit more because they are, of course, bigger connectors. 
and line it up. Well, that looks pretty good. So, we'll go ahead and preset. The nice thing about the ratcheting is that you can go ahead and slot it in ahead of time. Get that satisfying click. Oops, let's make sure we're actually in. And of course, remember with the ratcheting, uh, there's two depths. One is for the large pair of wings, the other is for the smaller pair. So let's get that in. Looks good. All right. And before we put that on, because it's easy to forget, we want that little plastic cover to go on. Because shorts are no fun at all. All right, and it really helps if you can twist the strands here, get them to stick together a bit more. All right, we just need to line it up. Let's see, all right, that's where we want it. Cool, and close down. All right, and here's your problem. This wires are pretty small. So what do we do? Well, if I can get it back in, that's good. And it looks like I can. What do you want? The only thing you need to do afterward is just give it another squeeze with your manually with the pliers. And there we go. Now it's stuck in there. Um, you may want to consider soldering in. I'm terrible at soldering, so I'm probably not going to try. Uh, I'll have to give this a real-world test, but that's how I'm doing it right now. I'm going to repeat this for our other two wires, and then we'll have our switch wire ready to go.